Hello, and welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jock. Of the Scientific Affairs team. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about how your food affects the microbiome and how a diverse diet can lead to a more diverse population of microbes. Uh, you know, the old saying, you are what you eat, and it turns out that that is actually true. Grandma, grandmother knew best. <laughs> I so agree with you. And, you know, this is really nicely shown in the David, David et al. paper. And what they primarily show is that an animal-based diet increases the colonization of specific harmful bacteria that can lead to the increase of bioacid production. Microbes from an animal-based diet could also lead to inflammatory bowel disease. And, you know, what's interesting is that results indicate that the gut microbiome rapidly responds to diet. So if you go from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet, your gut microbiome is going to respond to that kind of change. Now, keep in mind, plant and animal pathogens can reach the human gut via consumed plant or animal matter. So you I was really surprised by that. I was because, too. Uh, the, the number of plant viruses that they picked up was pretty amazing. Not just viruses, right? They picked up things like fungus and different kinds of bacterial strains. Wash your plants before you <laughs> eat them. <laughs> I really mean that. <laughs> now, you know, not to scare you, but we are omnivores, not herbivores or carnivores. Our diets have to be varied and to assure proper, that would assure proper colonization of the gut microbiota. Yeah, and in this study, they did 16 sRNA sequencing uh, on the Illumina platform, of course. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, this is a really great review to help you better understand the relationship. And, you know, the, the, the thing also that, sort of bugs me is that you always t tend to talk about the pathogens and, and the micro you know, the microbiota microbi as a pathogenic system. But really, it, it has a very important role to keep us healthy. Very true. And the Kamada paper does a great review of that. And a principal function of the microbiota is to protect the intestine against colonization by exogenous pathogens. You know, pathogens have evolved to use nutritional resources that are not consumed by your commensal bacteria to acquire growth advantage. So they're going to overcolonize compared to the bacteria that's already in your gut. Another strategy that pathogens use is to actually induce inflammation by their virulence factors. What's interesting is that your gut microbiota also affects extra intestinal autoimmune diseases like allergies, arthritis, type 1 diabetes, pancreatitis, multiple sclerosis. I mean, the gut microbes actually play a role in helping the T helper cells develop and act at distant sites out of the intestine. I mean, that's pretty cool if you think about it. Yeah, and if uh, the way they figured out a lot of this, um, these uh, effects is that they were looking at uh, use germ-free mice as a model. And um, they use gut-associated, uh, for example, germ-free mice don't really develop gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Um, very diminished and uh, it's only once they, uh, if they're exposed to microbes that they develop this defense uh, mechanism. So, and then you have the interaction uh, between the, um, the e complex immune system and it, it's just really much more subtle than we ever appreciate it because the immune system shapes the gut microbiota and sure. the microbiota in turn shapes the immune system. So everything is connected. So ultimately, it is really important to note that how important sequencing is to actually understand these subtle interactions. Because in, in the study, you can see they were able to sequence the vi to find the viruses, identify them very accurately, and then they will also be able to find the prokaryotes, the eukaryotes, uh, and get a very complete understanding by using the sequencing uh, systems. It's very true. It, it's, it's really nice. Um, look into how sensitive our technology can be to be even able to be able to identify so many different kinds of viruses or mm -hmm. bacteria or fungi species in this mass in from this one one piece of sample, and that's 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 why we thought this this was this you know a great review and a great paper. We should definitely look into it. Really nice. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for listening to us. Uh, please send us any comments, questions. Uh, we always love to hear feedback from you and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.